Folks, Mac T back, and uh, we have the GB5Z-14A664-D uh, cover and contact, basically clock spring, okay? And that's what this is, and uh, why are we replacing it? Well, here's the deal. I'm having function problems in the steering wheel controls, and uh, things aren't quite working right. I went ahead and replaced this control in another video and then I took it to Ford because I wanted a confirmation diagnostic that the uh, clock spring is bad. Paid $139. They diagnosed it and said, yep, clock spring is the problem. So I went ahead and paid for that clock spring and I paid a lot of money for this clock spring. I think it was, uh, what was it, uh, 88 bucks plus shipping. So they wanted 700 or so dollars to replace it. So we're going to go ahead and do it myself. Uh, check the internet, YouTube. Could not find anybody that's done a clock spring on a 2011 through 14 Ford Edge. A lot of other vehicles out there are Fords, but not an Edge. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do this, replace it. We got to start out by taking the airbag out. Then we got to end up taking some connectors off and then we got to pull the steering wheel off undo the nut on that and then get the steering wheel off once we get that done then we'll have access to clock spring now what does a clock spring look like well here's the case this clock spring I think is good for model uh, Ford Edge and believe it or not uh, my clock spring here works for a 2000 11 Ford Edge, which uh, Herbie is a July build, and believe it or not, Blueberry and Herbie share the same clock spring. They're both 2011s, but uh, Herbie was built in uh, July of 2010, and uh, old Blueberry here was built in January of 2011. So they both use the same clock spring. I think February they got a different clock spring. So any builds after this, you got to pay attention when you buy the clock spring because it goes by build date. So you got to make sure you buy the appropriate clock spring for the build date that you're going to be doing. It just doesn't go by model year. It goes by model year and build date. So make sure you do research. This one here is good for the uh, July through January builds. So that's why we're using it. And that's why Herbie and uh, Blueberry both use the same one. So this yellow or this uh, white pull tab is very important. We'll explain that as we install it. But uh, basically, we got to start pulling the steering wheel apart so we can get to it. And the first thing we got to do is the airbag. First thing first, on each side of the column is a hole. And on that hole, you got to stick something that you can release the airbag with. Uh, just so you all know as far as the airbag we went and disconnected the battery last night because you don't want that airbag to blow up in your face so everything's been disconnected for gosh Jeff how long has it been now 12 hours yeah, yeah it's been about 12 hours so we have no power in this vehicle and we're gonna go ahead and use this tool because it fits right in there see that that's right it's a Torx head. It's got a little bit of a round end on it. You need to make sure you do that. A flathead screwdriver will not work unless you feel lucky. But you want something round because it will catch it easier. But we're going to go ahead and put this in there and release this uh, airbag on here using this tool on each side and then pop the airbag out. Okay, you want to put your fingers up here and then sort of push this in and you'll come across the uh, spring eventually use this tool here to get to it but uh, the problem was you just gotta be gentle to get it once you get one side put your fingers in there or put something back here to hold it so you can work on the other one and then once you get that one this thing will pop out and then you got your airbags right here and essentially, you just want to take and pop these uh, clips out right here. Pretty simple. Gray for gray, black for black on your airbag. And then you set your airbag off to the side. 
And now we have access to our steering wheel. So what we got to do then is we got to take this nut off of here and it looks like it's a uh, Torx. So we're going to have to break out a Torx to get this off of here so we can remove the steering wheel. And in the process, we want to make sure that we have all of our uh, disconnects. So we disconnect this one here, it's real simple. Just push down the tab and pull it out. So the next thing we're going to do is pull this uh, steering wheel out. So here we go. We have this large Torx right here. And again, this is unbuckled or un disconnected from here. And this is your airbag. So when we pull the steering wheel out, you know, we have to make sure everything goes out through here as much as possible because it'll all come out as one unit. And then if there's any wires on here, we'll go through it. But right now we just got to undo this nut and then somehow get the steering wheel to come off. And we'll see how we work out with that. But this spring was the spring I was trying to hit right here. These things are touchy to get a hold of, folks. So basically, when you go through, you want to take and go through the hole in the steering column. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit that spring right there. And I tell you, once you feel it, you know you got it. But it is tough to get, so. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this uh, steering wheel nut off of here. And uh, see what we can do. Now, well, we're going to go ahead and get this done. It's a T45 if you're ever wanting to know what it is. Not in there too terribly hard. Get this removed, and that's the bolt right there. It's not a nut, it's a bolt, folks. T45, that's what you're going to need. And that's as hard as it is to get this off of here. It just came right off. It's got a nut that holds it into place, and then this. Uh, steering wheel is held in so it's held in it's a cone nut so when the bolt pushes on it it forces it on that and that's what it does so now we got to just take this covering off of here to get to this clock spring because this is the clock spring right here so that's where it was at that's where we're going to leave it so now we got to get this off of here with a couple screws down below we got some, some torque screws to remove and then we'll get this done. Now folks, you got one here, one here, and one down here, and they're all seven millimeter nuts. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these three, and then we can get this apart. Some logic says that this should be easy, right? I think that, that's the hard part. Yeah, that thing just comes to, falls apart once you get it started. There we go. And you didn't have to take the top off, you know. You had to just fold back out of your way. Yeah, I'm trying to get this off of here. Did you loosen the column? Yeah. Okay. Well, this. There you go. That would do a little more wiggle, wiggle room. I don't think this has to come off, it just separates. Easier said than done.
There we go. There. Here, you can just look inside it, just holding it. Okay, you see right back in there? We're just holding it with those clips, you see? Yeah, this clip's holding it. It's got a little... There we go. And this one pops out, like so, I think. There we go. Yeah, that sits that way. Just lay back. Yep. And this just lays back down. We're go. good. Got it done. Now this is the clock spring. And I gotta disconnect this wire right here. And uh, there's a couple screws. Looks like there's three of them. Got one screw there, one screw there, and one screw there. Connector. I could pull the whole clock spring off and then uh, put it back on. Now I just got to figure out what size Torx it looks like. Oh yeah, itty bitty Torx. So I'm going to have to find me itty bitty Torx on there and I'll let you know what size it is. Then we can pull this clock spring off of here and then get it remounted with the new one. We're going to gently remove these. That ain't the right one. I'm gonna remove this one. We don't want to lose that. Let me get this one off of here. Yep, that one holding it. Don't want to lose that one either. They're all the same size. Then we remove this one. So basically, take this off of here. And then there's a little clip right in the back, right here. Undo that. And that's how it is. So we got that one sitting there. Same orientation. And we'll go ahead and put this back on. There's a mark on here steering real straight. This is how we're going to put this back on here and mount it up. This would also be a good time if you got a stalk. Uh, turn signal and controls problems. These are where you undo the screws on these and then you just disconnect the wiring and replace it. So this is uh, basically how you're getting all this too. Now we have the new clock spring that we're going to of course get set in here so that we have it aligned properly. But the first thing we're going to do is plug it in the way it's supposed to be. Snap that in, slide it over, get it orientated to where the screws got to go. We have one right here.
nothing back there. That one right here. Do this one. I know that one goes there. Right here. There we go. By the way, this is set up pretty, pretty low, but now we have everything back in where we need it to be, so we can go ahead and put all our connections back here. Uh, now that we got this in place, we can then go ahead and uh, get the uh, steering wheel put back in. Now. You're not going to be able to do the steering wheel, okay, with this like so. We're going to get it put in here. So we have this all right here. So this plug goes in here. Once you get everything in where you need it to be, then you can pull this out and then that clock spring will activate. But we got the nut in there. But we want to make sure we get the plastic back in place before we start doing anything else. Now we got everything in here that we need as far as uh, our clock spring. So at this point, we have the clock spring where we need it to be. We can go ahead and pull this out. Okay, this is important, keeps the clock spring from moving around. So we got it where we need it. So we can take and put this steering wheel in. We got the orientation where we want it. It's gonna move around a bit on you. But there we go. We got it set. Just to make sure things don't move around too much, we can plug that back in there. We got everything set, and then we put the nut back in, or the bolt. We're basically reversing our process. There we go. Now we got to set this back up, get it nice and tight. There we go, it's getting tight. I'm gonna use my leg to hold it. There we go, nice and tight, don't wiggle. So we got all these wires in here, we got this for the airbag. We are now ready to put the airbag back in because we got everything connected that we needed to connect. So. We take this airbag again. Remember, gray for gray. Plug that in, it snaps in. And then the black one goes in the black spot. And they'll snap in. And we got everything hooked up that we need to hook up so we can take and snap the airbag in. And we've just replaced the clock spring. Now we're going to put the battery back on and test the controls and see if it actually works. Oh yes, here it is. I'm hitting the up button. Everything's working like it's supposed to. This never worked before, so now everything's working just as it was designed. Everything, I'm happy now. Oh wow, I got 7,000 miles on this oil change. Amazing. <laughs> anyway, fuel economy, all this stuff, I hit every button. 
cruise control is working. So, functionality check, good. How about this side? Yep, audio off, entertainment, phone, yep, everything is working. Navigation, oh yeah, everything's working on it. So, it was the clock spring that was bad, everything's now worked. I even replaced this, like I said before, but everything is working with the new clock spring. So. That was a fix, that's why the buttons weren't working. So it paid to have the diagnostic done and then I replaced the clock spring. So another thing done. Now I just gotta replace the rear camera. My Amazon camera is not working very well. So might be the next thing I do, but I probably won't make a video on it, I already did it. But just so you know, the Amazon camera has failed. But anywho, folks, this is good. Remember, like, subscribe, join, all that good stuff. Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. Also, remember, join up on MeWe. That's right. That's where you're going to find me if you have Ford Edge questions. And uh, Band of One's always got some great music. Mercy Girl's always playing or saying something. Yeah, she ain't playing. Band of One's playing music. Mercy Girl's saying something. So I'm all messed up. But Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. And remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.